JC Butters Tech Channel, and today we have two devices in. We're taking a look at the Meta Quest Pro and also the Pico 4. So I wanted to put my opinions on these two devices out there. What I'm not going to be doing in this video is a cost or value proposition. We all know that the Quest Pro is very expensive. We don't need to rehash that in this video. What I will be doing in this video is just comparing these two headsets from a simply technical and an experience perspective. And why might my opinion be valuable? Well, I've used almost every single consumer VR device since the Gear VR days, including the Vive, Vive Pro, Samsung Odyssey, Valve Index, Vive Pro 2, uh, HP Reverb G2, Pimax 5K+, Plus, Pimax 8KX, Oculus Quest 1, 2, and now Pro. So <laughs> there's a lot of things that I'm not going to cover in this video. This is not a review video of both these devices. There's plenty of those out there. In fact, let's just talk about what we are going to talk about. We're going to talk about lens quality. We're going to talk about the pixel arrangement and what that means for picture quality. Uh, we're going to talk about the color saturation, brightness, quality of the color, uh, the field of view, the comfort, and how well they work with PC VR. So if you're interested in all of that, stay tuned and we'll take a little bit of a deep dive into this stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the lens quality. And I'm gonna try to give you a look at this. This is obviously the Pico 4 here. So here are the Pico 4 lenses. You can see that they're pretty basic. They're flat. Um, they kind of have that same like greenish, blackish milkiness to them. And we'll show the Quest Pro for comparison. It also has, well, they're the pancake lenses, right? Uh, so it has a very similar, but they're not, they're not necessarily flat. It's kind of hard to see. They almost have this <clears throat> glaze. They're a higher quality lens and it kind of has this ridge on the end of it, uh, which I'm going to talk about image stability in a second here. I really feel like that is adding something to this. So just to show those maybe side by side kind of hard to do just the way they are but um yeah you can see that the pico has what appears to be larger lenses than the quest pro although they are very close um what does that mean for the user experience well with these lenses you know pretty standard bifocal um there, what I see in when I'm wearing the Pico headset is a lot of pupil swim. Um, when uh, the geometry of something that you're looking at, and I'll try to show this uh, on screen as well, but when you're looking either up or down or just kind of scanning as you're turning in a game, it's very obvious that you kind of have this like warp distortion field going on. Oh yeah, that's that with the hand thing I'm doing right there. You, that it's very apparent um, that that the image geometry is not stable to what it would be like in the real world. Um, on the Quest Pro, I feel like uh, I I don't know if and you know there's distortion profiles that you can load onto these devices, so it doesn't mean the Pico can't improve. I, in fact, I've heard people say that. I don't know how true it is, but I've heard people say that they you know need to work a little bit on that. Um, but uh, I definitely see a little bit of inconsistency in the lens on the Pico. On the Quest Pro, these lenses, my goodness, uh, even, you know, sadly it's Bradley has mentioned that the, the lens uh, are way too good for the panels on this, on this device. And I definitely agree with him. Uh, when you have this thing on, and you're scanning and panning like like the, it feels like when you as you're even when you're as you're like kind of putting it up to your head, it feels like it feels like glasses. Like it feels like you're looking through a pair of glasses into the real world as you put those on, and it is very stable. The geometry is super stable on that. So there is a definite definite leg up on the lens quality on the Meta Pro versus the Pico Four, and that's not the Pico Four is is bad uh, at all because the lenses are very clear. 
Um, and it goes almost all the way up to the edge. And I, I think I have some footage here as well. You can see any lens at the edge is kind of going to distort a little bit. Um, and the Pico 4 is slightly worse than the Meta Quest Pro, but that's because the Quest Pro is just, I mean, it's, it's just very, very nice picture coming out of this lenses. It's, it's very good. Um, so that's the lens quality between Pico 4 and Quest Pro. Let's talk about uh, pixels, pixel arrangement and resolution. So we know that the Pico 4 has 2160 by 2160 panels per eye, and um, it looks very sharp. It, it looks great uh, from the perspective of resolution. Uh, it's very high uh, Quest Pro. Now, uh, people were kind of upset that the Quest Pro actually had a slightly lower panel resolution uh, versus the Quest 2, but in my experience with the Quest Pro, the resolution, and John Carmack as well mentioned this, there is more of the panel, because there's two panels in this thing, more of the panel is actually aligned where your eyes can actually use the resolution. So the apparent resolution of the Quest Pro is actually much higher than the Quest 2, and I 100% agree with that. Uh, I have got a Quest 2 right here as well. And uh, you can you can really see back to back. I mean, it is super clear, super clear. Um, and I think you've probably heard about the canted displays where these displays are actually, the rectangular displays are actually tilted slightly like this. What I find that does is we are beings that stand horizontally. As you're standing on earth and you look at the horizon, you usually see a flat line. And when your pixels are lined up exactly horizontally, any, any one like tiniest degree tilt, uh, you can kind of see the aliasing like come off of that perfect horizontal line, like on the Pico where it is completely horizontal. Uh, you see kind of like you kind of see like the slight aliasing that that's just like one or two pixels. And it, it's super obvious uh, where the panel lines are, where the RGB lines are. Um, well, the resolution lines, I guess I should say. What I find on the Quest Pro is because they have that canted, you're already tilted enough that like the aliasing on the lines that you, that, that would be there. Like if you're looking at a horizon, it's already like, it's already anti-lazed at like a, you know, a, it's not a 45, but at enough of an angle where the pixels just don't register to your brain nearly as much. It kind of shifts it from being a grid. You're looking at this grid array normally. And when they're both shifted like this and they're opposite angles, like one's shifting this way and one's shifting this way, suddenly that pixel arrangement just kind of starts to blur and disappears at least for me and my brain, that's the way I interpret it, that pixels are much less apparent on the Quest Pro, even though it has lower resolution than the Pico 4. Um, the Pico 4 is still clearer. Like if you're looking at the detail of a tree or something like that, the Pico 4 does look a bit clearer, I would say, than the Quest Pro. But, um, but it is very clear and the pixels don't jump out to me as much on the Quest Pro as I do on the Pico 4. So that's the pixel arrangement. Um, let's talk about color saturation and brightness. And these are really hard things uh, to even, it's very subjective. It's easy to see in person, but it's hard to show in video. I took some through the lens shot to try to show this. Uh, but it's probably better just to hear my experience. The Pico 4 has really good color representation. I, yeah. When I'm going to praise the Quest Pro, I don't want to do it at the detriment of the Pico 4 because the Pico 4 looks really, really good. It looks, the colors are really good. Um, it's bright enough. It's, it's no problem. It's not an issue on, on the Pico 4, but the Quest Pro... Um, the, I mean, those, the colors are so good. 
uh, I've been playing Half-Life Alex with this headset. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing, uh, you can probably see I have a, <laughs> it's like, what is this? Uh, I'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but I've been playing Half-Life Alex with this headset and man, everything is just so clear and the colors are so accurate and they just pop on the Quest Pro, very good colors. Uh, and the Pico 4, a little bit more washed out. Um, in comparison, they're still very good, uh, but in comparison, the Quest Pro definitely has better brightness and color saturation and accuracy. I mean, I have no way to test that, but judging off my eyes and what I'm seeing, and I'm even in virtual desktop, I'm one of those people I actually don't like to enhance or, or adjust. So let's talk about now field of view because there are, there's both these devices have really interesting field of view implications. So for example, we have the Pico 4 with its faceplate here. Now, I don't know whose face shape they designed this for. It fits okay, like it fits me okay. But when you put this on, uh, it, it, your field of view is, it's okay. It's better than quest two, but it's not, it's not great. It's not, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it feels like quest two more to me. You, you pop this thing off and I actually have worn this with no facial gasket quite a bit. You put this thing on, um, and my head strap came off. So I need to, I need to fix that. But when you're wearing it like this, your field of view and your experience, like it is infinitely better. And you can probably see a little better at that angle. Um, it's not super comfortable and it pinches your nose right here. But my point is with, with the, with the, with the high field of view gasket on here, and I've, I'm going to take a stab at 3D printing, maybe a facial interface for this that's better. If you can get those lenses, though, right up to your eye, the field of view is really good. Um, and, and the vertical field of view especially feels really good. Now, the Quest Pro is also a mixed bag in that if you're wearing it, I'm going to say as intended, if you're wearing it like this and you have uh you know it's spaced away from your nose and away from thing it's the field of view is slightly smaller than the pico 4 when you have no gasket um but it's better than the pico 4 with its original gasket so i don't know what <laughs> i yeah, I, I've watched some other YouTubers uh, take it, their first look at the Quest Pro and were like, oh yeah, Pico 4 is way better. And I'm just like, actually experiencing it, uh, the field of view on this thing is is really good. It's better than the Pico 4 with the standard gasket. But you may have heard of this, you may have not, but there's a way to wear this that you get a really great field of view bump. And that is by tilting it down and putting your nose right, so, so, it, so it rests like a pair of glasses. You angle this up like this. The, the lenses are so good, the clarity doesn't go out at all by doing this. But when you're wearing it like this and you have it like almost sealed up against your cheeks like this, um, the field of view becomes massive. Um, and it's not, it's actually, I find it more comfortable to wear like this when it's higher on the head and angled up and pushed up against the bridge of your nose almost. Um, yeah, it's, when you do this, your field of view increases dramatically, uh, especially the vertical um, and the horizontal. And you suddenly, like, this is, this is like a pair of glasses to me, like no joke. Um, the field of view when you're doing it like this is, is, uh, very good. And you get completely immersed. Like you almost don't even need the seal on the other side. For example, um, I've got the side blockers, right? Uh, so if I drop these in the side, 
and I have it, and I'm wearing it tilted, I'm actually completely sealed off. People were were upset there wasn't like a full gasket at launch. I am fully sealed off in this device right now. Um, if you were upset about that, and my field of view is enormous, uh, it's it's. I mean, <laughs> I'm being hyperbolic a little bit here, um, but it is much better than the stock, and it and it, and it, this probably won't work for every face shape, but I find this very uh, comfortable and increases my field of view, and I can block out the sides if I want to. I actually don't mind having the wide angle open. It's very useful for comfort and keeping the sweat off your face or even from building up in the first place. So I really, really like the field of view on the Quest uh, Pro here. Um, Pico 4, great field of view as well, but I would say that uh, that the, the Quest Pro, if you wear it like this, is actually better. If you shift it down and then wear it how you're supposed to, and if you want the facial tracking, sorry, I bumped my thing. If you want the facial tracking to work, you actually have to shift it down like this. Otherwise it can't get a good read on your face and will get angry with you. Um, but for playing PC VR, uh, it's, it's really good. Um, so let's talk about comfort. And it's a good point to do that because as you can see here, uh, the Quest Pro, in terms of comfort, is a mixed bag. Uh, so for example, I, I never thought I would like this as much as I do, but the fact that you have all this open area when you're wearing this, and I've done this like 10 times, but all this open air is amazing. Uh, if you're playing Beat Saber, it is so, like I used to like just drench my gaskets on my valve index. With this, it's not an issue because you have airflow on your face. And um, so I, for those reasons, I find the Quest Pro very comfortable. However, the fact that all of the weight is pushed right here, it, it, I find it can be very uncomfortable. When I first started wearing this, uh, when I first got it, it literally gave me headaches. Uh, but as I've used it more and more, I don't know, I've just built up a little bit more resistant to that and I can wear it, you know, a couple hours pretty easily and it doesn't give me the headaches anymore. It, it's become more comfortable. When I first got it, I was like, there's no way I can wear this. Um, but now that I guess my forehead's broken in, I, I feel like I, could, I can, I can deal with it. And I think if someone comes up with like maybe uh, a pad here that's a little bit taller, maybe has more more area on it, uh, that that those things will, it will get better over time. Uh, let's talk about Pico 4 on comfort. So the first thing about this device, it is, uh, I mean, I, I actually really like this thing. Uh, I, and I like a lot of devices, obviously. But, I mean, look at this thing. It is it is puny. It's tiny. It is, uh, and I especially, <laughs> like, I really like wearing it without the gasket. Like, I, I, it, I, it's not a long-term thing, but the field of view goes, like, immense when you're wearing it without the gasket. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's good. I find with this, in place, the comfort, it's quite comfortable. The, the padding's a little stiff, but I think it will wear in, but it is comfortable. And my particular face shape, uh, I don't have any issues with light leakage on the side, but the field of view is very greatly diminished. I mean, this thing is so tall. I feel like they could have, you know, cut uh, even an inch off of this thing in the padding and been fine, but I think they wanted to keep it larger for glasses wearers. So, I mean, hopefully we get a low profile padding on this thing in the future um, that makes it both comfortable and good field of view. Cause right now, like, I don't even wanna, it's like, it's like not worth it to me to wear it with, <laughs> with this thing on it. 
um, because the field of view is so much better when I when I do it like this. And it literally puts your face, like you're jamming your face into that nose bridge, like you're wearing it like a pair of spectacles at that point. Um, but it's just really good field of view um, at that point. Uh, but this thing is light. This thing is very light. The first thing I did, I like picked this up and I was just like, holy cow, this is, this is getting close, you know? Um, in fact, I don't think you could actually, I haven't ever taken this strap off before, but I mean, if they redesigned the casing, this could almost feel like a pair of glasses, like almost, like it's so close. You could almost like, readjust it to kind of clip behind your ears because it's very light um so for that it's it's very good so one other thing that that goes under comfort though that i have to talk about is the fact that the pico 4 they both have fans the pico 4's fan is pretty noticeable um i never noticed the meta quest pros fan when it kicks off um i haven't super listened for it but when the fan kicks off on the Pico 4, it's pretty audible, which can take you out of the experience a little bit. Not a big deal, but it is noticeable, and it's definitely a comparison point between these two devices. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is PC VR. So there's a couple of ways to do PC VR, and they're both capable of it. Um, they're not ideal ideally you have a real cable you can connect into these things so you can get the best quality um so i have used the pico 4 both with virtual desktop and using the pinko assist software and the pico assist software is surprisingly not bad uh when you're wired in with this thing um i actually wired into my cabling system the the link cable on usb-c and when i run this uh, it actually, the software, you have to get the right software because there's a few different versions, but if you get the right streaming software for Pico, um, it works quite well. Um, and I think they can, imp they can definitely improve it. For example, they have like a super low quality mode, which is the default. And then there's like a SD mode and then an HD mode. I'm pretty sure that the max it's doing in the HD mode is not anything that would reflect the capability of the display in the Pico 4. It looks like 10, I, I almost think it's 1080p. Like it's, I mean, they're labeling HD, which HD is 1080. I think there's 1080 lines of resolution when you run it that way. And it looks good, uh, but not nearly as good as it does standalone. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty visible that, that the image quality is not there. Now, uh, that can be improved. In virtual desktop, uh, both of these devices perform for me and in my Wi-Fi environment, uh, they both performed pretty close to the same. Um, you know, I don't think, it, I don't think at least at this point that any of the Wi-Fi solutions in the Pico 4 or the Quest Pro um, are a lot better or worse than the other. So yeah, I usually try to target uh, 120, the, the bitrate setting in virtual desktop, and they both do pretty well. So let's talk about Link. Um, so <laughs> with Link, this works really, really well. In fact, uh, a lot of times with Beat Saber, I'm an Expert Plus Beat Saber player, and uh virtual desktop it's really hard and really frustrating to play over virtual desktop um just because any slight little stutter or glitch um in the encoding will throw me off and i'll miss points that i feel like i actually earned and then i'm missing because the technology's in my way so that's kind of an issue so to get the like best image quality and um and most stable connection, uh, even playing like Half-Life Alex, like I've analyzed these things so much that I'm just, my brain is just super wired to notice any slight stuttering or hiccup or 
it's it's like a curse like reviewing stuff like this because you can't just enjoy a game you're just constantly thinking like oh like where you know what is is it working right blah 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 so anyways using the link cable with the quest pro uh, looks amazing it looks really good um it, it's so close to being like wired with like a display port um and, and I don't know what that is because I, even with the original Vive, with the wireless Vive solution, which is highly acclaimed that it's like one of the best wireless solutions for VR, um, the compression artifacts just ruined it for me. And we were already dealing with pretty low resolution. So any like degradation there was like a big deal for me. With the Quest Pro, I assumed, you know, I, I, what I really want, I won't, I won't get into that. But with Link, uh, it looks really good. And I think part of it's because the resolution's so high that even if there's a few little compression artifacts here and there, um, they're not nearly as overwhelming because there's just already so much detail uh, in the picture that's hitting your eyes that it doesn't bother me as much. I could still, I mean, I could still definitely in a like a blind test of like a wired headset versus Oculus Link. I could tell you which was which, but it's good enough with Link that uh, if you want to use this as a high-end wired VR headset, uh, I think there's a case to be made for it. And you can see, I, I actually have this Tundra, Tundra Tracker on here. There's a way to sync it up with your Valve Index controllers um, and and I have been using this that way quite a bit. And it's good enough that uh, I actually am going to replace my Valve Index with the Quest Pro because it's that good. Um, still stuck at 90 hertz. Still stuck, uh, I mean, much rather be at 144. But uh, it's a little janky to get it going, but it's the, the experience you get uh, with either the, the Quest Pro or this, it's such a step up. I think it's worth it at this point. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, get, I got a little bit in the weeds, but there you go. Uh, comparison of the Meta Quest Pro and the Pico 4. Those are the things that stand out to me. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, leave them in the, in the comments and I'll get back to you. And thanks for watching.